Hey everyone, good morning. So, as discussed, today we'll talk about how do we set up Kubernetes from scratch. That is what the target is today. Okay, let me share my screen. Let me share the agenda in bit, bit more details. So, how exactly we'll do? So, initially I've explained like Kubernetes can be installed using multiple ways. One of the ways is using Minikube. There is a tool which you can use to set up Kubernetes. Minikube is one of the tool. So if you have, if you don't have multiple VMs to set up master and a worker node, you can make use of Minikube. And using Minikube, you can set up Kubernetes on a single node cluster. Okay. Or else you can have a tool which you can use Cube ADM basically. So Cube ADM is can help you set up a production level Kubernetes cluster. The minimum requirement is at least one VC, uh, one, two v, one master node and one worker node. So we'll make use of kubeadm itself for setting up cluster. But there is a tweak. I'll not be using two VMs guys. I'll use one VM on which I'll set up master node and I'll untained this master node so what did i say if your by default the master node is tainted what does that mean if it is tainted you cannot set up any pods you can run in you cannot uh, set up any pods on top of it so what i'll do i'll untaint it and i'll sh show you how exactly the untaint thing works and we'll set up a for pre for testing we'll set up a pod also on top of it once the kubernetes cluster is set up and we'll run a nginx web server in short so that is what we'll do these are the two tools we can use for setting up kubernetes there are multiple other ways also if you want to set up kubernetes from scratch with, uh, without using any of these tools even that is possible but you have to be very good with uh, the keys and certificates and all because that is how the communication happens within this services in kubernetes okay so let's go and do that. The first thing is we need to have a VM created. The VM minimum requirement, guys, this is minimum. You can go maximum or like whatever size you want to go with. The minimum is you need to two V CPU at least and at least four GB of RAM and a Ubuntu or any Linux OS. For now, we'll, we'll take Ubuntu 18.01. That is what I'll take this in this session. So this is what the requirement is for now and on top of it this is the VM on which I'll be setting up my control plane nodes. Control plane we are all aware. Just if you don't remember fall back to the architecture diagram and in that we have the control plane wherein we had our API server running, we had our uh, ETCD running, we have the scheduler, we have all the control plane nodes so that is what we'll be setting up. Okay, and don't worry if you want to have a one into one setup like one master node, one worker node, I'll show you how exactly even that is done. Okay, okay, so let's get started. Let's have this setup done. The first thing I need to create a VM. So let's go back to a virtual machine and let's create a VM. Do I have a resource group? Don't I have a resource group? Let's create a resource group with the name DevOps Mela hyphen VM hyphen RG. Okay. Virtual machine. Okay. The region East US. Availability zone. Keep it anything. Security type standard. It's okay. Thus I'll select 1804. So it's not 01. It is 14. Okay. Mm, administrator type. Let's use user ID and password over here. So I'll just have DevOps Mela. Test at one two three four five six seven eight. This is the password. Uh, inbound port. I'll keep it twenty two for now. But I'll be opening all the ports, guys. Right? So there are n number of ports which Kubernetes cluster will be using when you try to set up so 
will basically for now just for practice will open all the ports but in production you can go and check the list what are the ports required and you can go and open those ports okay for now i just open all the ports okay monitoring i'll just disable it no unnecessary monitoring i want so let's wait while my vm is getting created and see the cost it is 2.99 inr per hour so that is okay so if you see i got 2v cpu and 4 gig of memory and standard b2 this is the size which i'm launching right now and the os is 1804 we got the disk attached ssd and there's a virtual network which is getting created this is the default subnet and we'll have a public ip created perfect Let's wait. Okay, so the VM is getting created. Let's wait. We'll connect to this VM using the Git Bash itself. So this Bash shell, which we will be using to connecting to this VM. And running um running all our commands okay let me while this is coming up let me introduce you to the various documentation which we will be referring in order to set up kubernetes cluster so kubernetes cluster is not a straightforward command which we can execute and the kubernetes cluster will be up and running so there are various things which we and we basically will be using the official documentation of kubernetes itself no third party documentation so the first thing is just look for install kubernetes using kdm so this is the screen which it will take you create a cluster with kubeadm so this is what i have opened right now okay if you go through the documentation you, you will see at the initial before you begin there are few prerequisite 2 gig of ram and 2 vcpu I, i'll suggest 4 gig 2 gb is very less guys so it will be very difficult to run kubernetes cluster on 2gb but yeah if you want on linux on 2gb to run kubernetes cluster even that is possible but at least i will suggest to go with 4 gig okay you should if you are setting up a master and a worker node you should have a unique host name and mac address so make sure you verify that that is not in our case and once you come down how to verify the mac address the steps are given checking network adapter checking if this port 6443 is open or not the second important thing installing container runtime what did i say a container runtime is very much essential to run kubernetes cluster so there are various container runtime which is supported by kubernetes now you can see the list for now i can go into the c container runtime which is supported now if you go inside this you can see the list and when in this i have selected it select supports container d cri docker engine and many more so this is what i am selecting docker engine so when i select that it will take me to this screen wherein i can go and set up docker from scratch that is what we have to do the first step is setting up docker engine okay now do we have the server up yes perfect let me see i have my public ip let's connect to this vm okay i'm connected to the vm right now so the first thing is and let me switch to a root user okay i'm into the root user if you want to verify all the config so this is free m give you the ram this is 4 GB and CPU will give you the CPU information. Okay, it's not N CPU, N proc, sorry. So command is N proc 2V CPU. And if you want to know the it's Ubuntu 18.04.6 LTS Bionic B Weaver what we are using right now. 
okay looks good the first command which I'll run is app update before I go and do anything else okay so the steps the first thing is what we are installing is docker the container runtime engine so yeah this command we already executed so let's run this command so these are some bind these are some dependency which we are downloading before we jump on to docker okay is it done yeah let's go and download this dependencies yes post that we need to add this gpg key so this is the directory what we're creating then we're adding the key let's copy this let's execute perfect now this is the following command for setting up docker repository now let's go ahead done let's run the update again now you can see the docker link also so this is what we have did once we are done with that this is how we are setting up docker docker ce docker cli container d dot io docker compose hyphen plugin these are the four services what we are running we got docker engine running we got docker cli container d even container d is required and docker compose plugin okay so it's all four applications what we are running right now okay let's wait while it is getting executed then we are done with docker once the container container runtime is installed we move on to the next step wherein we need to set up cube adm and cube adm basically will help you bootstrap kubernetes cluster okay let's verify if your docker is running or not system ctl status docker running container d if you want to verify container d container spelling mistake I am doing typo. Container D. Not dot D, only D. Okay, even the container D is running. Looks good. Okay, so we got Docker. We got the Docker runtime engine running. We got the container D running. That's looking good. Let's move on. What else we need to do? Installing container D was the step that is done. And one important thing, just let's open all the ports before we end up getting error. So let's go and open the ports first. So I'll go in networking. I'll add the inbound rules. And this is not not at all suggested for production, guys. I'm opening all the ports for now. If you see all the destination ports I'm opening with the star star means all the ports will get opened okay and just name it as kubernetes ports which is not at all suggested in production in production when you're setting up production level kubernetes cluster make sure to open only specific ports which kubernetes is using okay now if you see my let's wait while these ports are getting open okay let's go back once the container runtime installation is completed come down there is an option to set up installing kubeadm okay kubeadm will not manage your kubelet kubelet we all know remember the example of pilot and the aeroplane which i gave so kubelet is the pilot basically uh, this will takes care of all your starting your pods and containers so kubelet and kubectl so this versions will not be managed and maintained by kubeadm so this is something we have to do it so three things we need to install kubeadm so kubeadm is basically the com command to bootstrap your cluster it will help you bootstrap your cluster the second is kubelet the, this component that runs on all your machines this is a services which will run all on all, all your machine in your cluster and does things like starting pods and containers 
Kubelet, we all know, it's a command line utility to talk to your cluster. These are the three things which, and all these three tools basically should use the same version. If you're using a different version, then there is a great chance that your cluster will misbehave. All these three tools, kubeadm, kubelet, kubectl should share the same version. In future, if you're upgrading kubeadm, make sure kubelet and kubectl also gets upgraded. So the release cycle is very similar. So if kubelet is getting upgraded, kubectl is something, there is new update. At the same time, even kubeadm Cube will also have the same update, guys. Minor version, like suppose if you're using 1.25 and there is a change, version change 1.26, that is okay but if there's a major version change that is not at all acceptable so keep that in mind keeping that in mind i'll go and set up this so this is the command which we have to go and execute set update is not needed let's run this command okay so we are setting up kubeadm kubelet and kubectl these three things done and base, when you're setting up kubernetes make sure to uh, access only kubernetes website the official website don't go to any third party url because that website may not be updated the versions may mismatch and many things may happen so it's always recommended to use the official website of kubernetes okay Let's update, we got this new URL added. Let's go and install these three tools. Let's wait. Okay, done. Now there is one more command over here given sudo app mark hold what exactly this command is so basically uh, it will like if I mark this services as hold so automatically it will avoid auto auto up update of this apps like when you run the command auto update it will make sure this services are not auto updated the reason is very clear as I said if there is a mismatch in your uh, any of this version like suppose there is an update for kubectl and there's an update for kubelet but kubeadm has not be, not released yet the latest update and if these two got updated and kubeadm is still lagging behind then there's a great chance that your cluster will start misbehaving so it's better to hold it and whenever there is an update you go and do it manually avoid or any auto updates so that is the reason we are running this app hold Okay, so all this kubelet is set on hold, kubeadm is set on hold, kubectl is set on hold. How do we verify if everything is installed? Let's go and verify kubectl. I can have version, I can make use of this short. Okay, we have the client version and customized version. This looks good. And what else we have? Kubeadm. Kubeadm, I think we can use version, version, hyphen, hyphen version. No, this flag is not acceptable only one flag not even this just two version perfect perfect now if you see 1.253 the previous one which we ran 1.253 and what else we have kubelet done kubeadm done no kubelet okay cube and let Kubelet, I think hyphen hyphen version. Yeah, see 1.3. So we are matching version 1.25.3. So this, if this changes 3 to 4, 5, 6, that is okay. But if there's a change, minor, major change, so definitely that is not accepted. So as if now we got all these three tools which is sharing the same version. So this is totally fine for me. Now the next step is we need to bootstrap. Okay configure a cg group driver 
so in docker runtime this is not needed we'll, we'll ignore it for now and then we'll move on to the next step using kubeadm create a cluster okay so basically when you click on this it will come to this screen this is the screen okay you can go through the instruction the only command which you have to execute from here like if just a master node which we are setting up when you set up a worker node you can even set up the subnet range over here but for now so if you want to set up a subnet range you can do that for now we'll just run this command kube adm init so basic basically it will initialize your kubernetes cluster that is what we are doing it right now okay let's go and initialize and let's see if everything goes good it does a free 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 flight check but no we am getting some error container runtime is not running we already checked my containers are my container runtime engines are running so this is the error which we are getting so how to avoid this error so there is a file which we have to remove the file is basically it's a container d container d config file which we need to remove etc container container d and there is a name of the file yeah config.tom this is a file which we have to remove once you remove this file restart your container d system ctl restart container d done now run the init again remember this guys now it will do a, a pre a pre flight check so basically it will check for all the configuration it will uh, run the bootstrap basically so it will pull all the required images and everything will be pulled it will check for your internet connection and if you have set up with your cube adm if you given any network range it set up all it will create certificates it will create all the required services so basically all the pods will be created your etcd pod will be created your dns pod will be created your uh, scheduler will be created and what else you will have your control plane nodes everything will be created now if you see it it got created how do we verify see applied code dns cube proxy it created rbac rules it created bootstrap tokens so so many it created your config map you remember secret config everything was created creating static pods manifest cube servers cube controller cube scheduler all this was automatically created this was all created by cube adm if suppose if you do, you want to do everything manually so all this you need to create from scratch by yourself you need to create the certificates and keys as well that is how kubernetes interacts communicate okay all this was created these are the steps which we need to execute now so to start using your cluster you need to run the following as a regular user so let me run this command first and now if you see this then you can join any number of worker node by running the following on each also as a root now suppose if you have worker nodes so on the worker nodes you need to set up this guys the same step you need to do the on the worker node also you need to set up a docker runtime engine and you need to set up kube adm kubelet and kube ctl all this whatever we did you need to do it on the worker node also once that is done you have to you don't you don't have to run the kube init kube adm init that is the only step you don't have to do on the worker node and this is the command after once your master node is created the cluster is created this is the command you need to execute on each worker node once you execute this command it will be connected to your world so there there will be a master and worker node connection which will happen so if you want to join any of your vm as a worker node so these are the command which you need to execute once you have installed every uh, all the previous steps what we did okay for as if now i don't have a multi vm so i'll just stick with one vm so i'm not running this as if now anywhere but i'll be definitely executing this command so let's go and execute those commands i'll exit out of root and i'll just execute this commands okay done done 
basically what's happening it's creating a dot q fold uh, directory inside that it's copying the configuration then it is giving the access Chow. changing the owner permissions done now we have successfully created a kubernetes cluster master node how do i verify i can quickly go and run my kubectl commands and i'll just write all so when i run the kubectl get all I, the only thing i'm seeing is the service in my default namespace but if you go and see all namespace this is this much of services which is running we got code dns we got etcd database we got kube api we got kube controller we got kube proxy we got kube scheduler these are the master node components remember we talked about all this is running and one thing is very weird over here the code dns is in pending state so as if now if you try to create anything on this cluster there is no communication happening okay so basically we need to enable communication between the pods so basically there's no it's not happening so as if now uh, my if i try to create any pods it will not work right now okay and there's no communication happening it will not even communicate to outside world if it's not even communicate to your worker node components so what we need to do we need to set up networking between the pods how do we set up networking so for setting up so if you come down to this screen itself after cube in it what it says installing port network add on so we need to set up container network interface if you go back to aks remember we use something called there was a option of azure cni and there was one more option of cube uh, cube proxy i think kubenet sorry kubenet so we have used kubenet over there that enable the pod networking that was aka that was completely managed by microsoft that was okay but in case if you are setting up things from scratch you need to set up pod network by yourself and there are multiple uh cni which is supported by kubernetes there is a complete list so if you go and to this like if you there is a link over here Kubernetes networking models, or uh, where it went? The Kubernetes networking model basically it will take you to this screen. So this is the list of networking and networking policy which Kubernetes supports. CNI what it supports. There are ACI, Entera. These are all third-party add-ons which is supported by Kubernetes. Mainly people uses Flannel, Calico. Flannel is over here, and in this we'll be using Vivnet. So Vivnet provides a networking and networking policy. Will carry on working on both side of network partition and does not require an external database. So everyone, all this add-on. If you want to see what is the difference between these add-ons, you can see the difference. Each one has some benefits. It has, each one has some a disadvantage. It one has some more features. So you can go and distinguish. What we will be using, either will be we can use uh, Vivnet. This is the one. These are these are all open source, or we can make use of uh, Flannel. Okay, so let's go and make use of Vivnet, and this is the add-in which I'll be using. So let's click on this. So basically, it will take you to the Vivnet homepage, and how do we set up this DNS code DNS? This is the command which you need to go and execute. So what basically it will do? It will create a pod. And it will enable communication between the pods. That is the net CNI which we are using right now. Okay, let's go and run this. Done. Created. Let's go and verify. Now, if you see, there's a one more pod got created. That's Vivnet, and still in pending. Let's give give it some time before we try and see if the code DNS is up or not. Okay. Perfect. Now, do you see the code DNS? The pending has changed to running right now. Now this is working. We got the Vivnet also. 
Now we got a name two namespace default namespace and cube system, and we got everything is looking good. So as of now, I think I have my cluster ready. Now how do we verify if the cluster is ready or not? The best way is to verify is to run a pod and see if my cluster is running or not. Okay, let's go and create a nginx pod. What is the command? kubectl run image nginx. Uh, let's give a name nginx name as web app nginx. Perfect. Now let's go and what I'm doing? kubectl get pod pending. Let's wait. It's still in pending. The, it will not take this much of time to launch a pod. Why exactly it is pending? How do we verify? We can go and do a kubectl describe. Correct? Describe and let's see why it is pending. Web app nginx. Okay. Now if you see the error. Warning. 0 to 1 nodes are available. 1 node had untolerate taint. What did I say? What is what was the default nature of Kubernetes master node? It is toler uh, already taint is set on top of it. So when there is a taint, you cannot set up any pod on top of it. Only system which which is used by Kubernetes master node only those services will be set up on master by default because those those services are tolerant. Now this pod, this nginx web app, you cannot set up on master. Then how do I set up? I need to untend this node. How do we verify if this node is tainted? How do we check uh, Kubernetes nodes? kubectl get nodes, correct? This is how you will set up. Check. There is a node. DevOps Mela VM. Ready. This is control plane roles. And this is the version. Okay. That is how we check. This is my running node right now. But can I see if I have a how, how do I check the status of taint I can do a describe and I can give check more details about this node how do I do it I can run the command kubectl describe a node I can give the name of the node and I can make use of grab I can just look for taint now, do you see there's a taint setup right now? What is a taint? No schedule. This is setup right now. So basically, we cannot schedule anything on this particular master node. What I have to do? I have to go and do a untaint. How do I do it? The command is kubectl taint node. What is the name of the node? DevOps Mela. DevOps Mela hyphen VM and this is what I have to copy put it over here and one important thing you have to use the dash no space dash this is a minus sign which will go and untaint okay remember this dash if you forget this dash nothing will happen done now if you see this this particular node is untainted how do we verify then the command describe again do you see it's removed now if you go and check your pod now quickly your pod might be up and running you see this the pod your nginx pod is up and running right now let's do a describe to have more details about this describe oh my mistake I have not written pod okay now if you see the container is created successfully assigned pulling image pulled image and your container is successfully created okay guys this is how how do I go and access this pod now how do I go and access the web server what did we do in AKS we created a load balancer type services correct do we have what all services do we have right now 
we don't have any services this is a by default service which is running so i can use no load balancer type it will assign a public ip or this time i can even use a node port type why node port i already have a public ip correct so this is a vm i can access my web application on this public ip also so even node port type will work over here guys how exactly it will work let's see how do we create i don't remember the command so what should i do kubectl expose help correct that is the best way okay now i can go and run the command kubectl expose what is the file name expose pod what is the name web app correct something like this only nginx and what is the port it listens on port 80 protocol target port if you want you can define the target port for the node port by yourself or else it will go and assign automatically name if you want to give i just give a name as web app hyphen svc and what else type the main important thing over here is type what we can assign what is the type node port okay i can assign a type node port perfect let's see created let's go and verify get svc or else i can just do get all over here so i can see the running pod also okay i got the running pod and i got the svc now you see, do you see this is the port on which your web application will be listening right now how do i let's go and verify locally first http local host and let's see the port index.html perfect this is looking good let's verify from outside let's go and verify it from here what is the port 3174 Let's see this. If we have welcome to Nginx web server. So, guys, this is how you will be setting up your Kubernetes cluster from scratch using KubeADM tool. Using one single VM, you will be setting up and you will be running your pods, your deployment, your services on your master node itself by untainting the master node. in future if you want to set up a worker node you should have the worker node vms created inside the same same uh, virtual network and you saw the command which you need to join make sure that there is a communication happening between your two those two vms once that is established you can connect using you can join those as a worker node using the same set the command which you got when you did the cube adm in it okay two things in mind for setting up a worker node same steps you need to run you need to set up docker runtime engine not docker to be specific you can run any runtime engine which is supported by kubernetes you need to install kubeadm kubelet kubectl and then later just run the join command and your worker nodes will be up and running in that scenario you don't need to untaint your master node that is not recommended by me this is just for practice just to demo demonstrate to you how exactly things work that is the reason as i did in reality you don't have to do it your master node should be kept aside for from your applications okay it should be only used for used by your control plane components nothing else you should deploy your application on a worker node this is how a complete kubernetes will be set from scratch okay that's it from this session if you have any questions any doubt do let me know initially you'll face difficulty when you're setting up kubernetes cluster guys but try it couple of times see try to understand the error what exactly the error is and try to set things up for yourself okay that's it for me guys if you have any questions please do let me know or we can wind up the call for today